Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I've been doing some reviews throughout the whole time I've done my channel and a lot of people have said I'm a beginner, what are the best books to have or to buy? There are thousands and thousands of crochet books. First thing, if you're going to buy a book, have a look at the comments whether you're on eBay, whether you're on Amazon, whether you're in a, on an online bookstore, have a look at the comments and see what some people say because some people will say this is a USA version or this is a UK crochet version. So make sure that when you're buying a book it's the right version for you unless you learn and I would suggest that you learn both crochet terms for the USA and for Europe because most of Europe we have a different term to the USA so I found for me personally the best two books when I was relearning how to do crochet is an encyclopedia or crochet techniques this one is a step-by-step -step guide to crochet very similar books one of these and a stitch dictionary. You can get along online. There's lots of free advice online. There's lots of free patterns online. But if you want something to physically have, then I think the two best types of book to have is a technique book or a step-by-step -step book and a dictionary one, a stitch dictionary. And these are all stitch dictionaries. These. These are the ones. I've got this one all marked out. This is what I've well used. Now this one is like. We'll do the stitch dictionary type ones first. Now what is a stitch dictionary? It is a record of stitches and how to do them. Some of them. A lot of them actually have a graph. That you can follow. You've got. You skip three chain, one, two, three, treble crochet, chain one, treble crochet, chain one, treble crochet, chain one. That's how you read one of these. And this part here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven treble crochets, but you keep it all on your hook and you pull it all together with your last stitch. It's also written out. Each of this one is a step-by-step -step guide. Step one, step two, step three. They tell you how many rows there are, what the stitch count is. It's got step one, and that's step one there, and then step two, and then step three on it. It tells you stage by stage, and each one is a different stitch or little pattern. Some people will get mixed up with a written pattern, as in how to make a sweater, and a stitch pattern. It's got lots of different, you can see I've been writing in these, it's got lots of different pattern and stitches. So it's a group of stitches that make up a pattern. And this book has lots of them. It's got it in that version and a written version. There's your written versions there. Step by step guide. Some of them are not as quite descriptive as this one. This is a good one. Now it says 200 more crochet stitches. There is another book. I don't know where I've put it. <laughs> it might be in my crochet bag downstairs but there is one that is 500 crochet stitches. So it's 500 crochet stitches and 200 more. Now what I'm going to show you is this. This is the UK version and these are Harmony Guides. These are American. So I got these on a website called World Books and a lot of them are second-hand books. And I've got some on eBay as well. Now look at these volume books like this. Crochet stitches where you've got 300. Like a stitch guide or a dictionary. And what you get, it starts, let's go to here. You get basic crochet instructions. Basic crochet instructions like this. And it's in this other book as well. This is just a little older, but it's all it's all the same. It's older, but the same. And then it'll tell you basic texture stitches. 
your basic treble crochets, how to do what's called a track stitch, that's just an elongated treble crochet. You've got double crochet cluster stitch. Now, to me, that is like a bean stitch. So, each of the stitches have got different names, but this starts from very basic. Your basic stitches, your groups of stitches, tells you how to work out your diagrams. It starts with your basic trebles, double crochets, half trebles, all your basic stitches, and then it uses these basic stitches to go on and make these pattern stitches, like your Catherine wheel. Your Catherine wheel is made up a set of treble crochets going up this way. You've got one that you're gathering from down this way. It's all those little stitches, and you put them together, and it makes all these beautiful patterns. Now, in this, you've got how to do Tunisian. There's a little bit on Tunisian crochet, edgings and trims. There's motifs, circles, diamonds. There's ones like snowflakes, ones you can put them all together and make a big blanket. There is lots of ideas. You could join a lot of those together and make a scarf, make handbags with them. There's hexagons. There is... I love that one. I love that one. There's circles, there is, that's a hexagon, that's a pentagram. <laughs> that one's got one, two, three, four, five sides, this one's got six. So you've got all these different styles of what you, a lot of people class as granny squares. All granny squares are not square. So you've got ones that are like, this one's called the frozen star. You've got the Russian square, you've got a Moorish medallion, crystal squares, Spanish squares, puff stitch squares. A lot of these all get classed into granny stitch squares, but even though they don't have granny stitches in them, and that's a beautiful one with that flower embossed inside it. And what you can do is you can actually just do the flower, forget about the rest of it, or you can make a lot of these with the flower in it and do blankets, do them in different colours, do them any do some of them without the flower in. So this gives you a little comprehensive amount of stitches. But the best thing is all these patterns, all the stitch ways that make up these basic patterns for scarves, for bags, for blankets, for clothing, all of that. You've even got fillet crochet, and that is where you've got all these little holes. It's like mesh. I'll hold that up, and it looks like me. I'll let you do that. That's an A for Alison. And what you can do is you just repeat it. You repeat and repeat and repeat, and it becomes a blanket for that. So we'll put these two aside. So that one's got 220 more. It, it does include Irish style crochet, trimmings, edgings. So it's not just all stitches, and again it starts with your basic crochet. So it doesn't matter if you get this one, you get this one, you've got them all. I've never seen any other volumes of these other than 6 and 7. And look at all these different things. Look at that, that's the spider stitch. That's, I mean, this one is called, it doesn't actually give it a name, but I know that one as the spider stitch. Other people will call it something different. It just it depends. It's all fillet crochet with the little boxes and the gaps in and around. There's a good explanation of that and all these lovely patterns. These are beautiful books. I love these books. I like vintage books. And you've got these ones. These are newer ones. These are These were done in like 2012 or 2014, something like that. And in this, again, you've got granny squares, all different types of granny squares. So it tells you what the stitches mean, and then you would just follow along. You find round one is going to be in the circle, so it's you do a magic ring. So it will tell you what to do. You chain four, and that is one stitch and a chain space. A treble crochet, chains, do a chain, treble crochet, chain, treble all the way around. Then it'll tell you round two is here. That black dot means slip stitch. Chain three, two treble crochets, 
skip a stitch, two treble crochets, chain three for your corner, and that's how you follow these. You just look at the diagram, and then you look what the key is, and you can always just write, you can write it down under there, it's your book, you can write on it if you like. So this one has got granny squares, again, it's got edges, it's got how to do the ed these edges, tells you what the stitch count is, so you can add it to different types of blankets. You have got um, waves and, and zigzags. So they'll tell you basically how to do how many stitches to do one section of it, and then you just keep repeating it. It's got full zigzags as well. And once you learn how to do a zigzag, then they're quite easy to do as well. But look at all the different styles you can get. There are so many different styles. And look at these books. And people will say, did you do that yourself or did you see someone else's? And you think, well, it's in this book, so I can do it from this book. I can take this section over and that section, join them together, as long as they have the same stitch count. So you can make things up, make pattern ways up with these dictionaries. You can pick a stitch from here, pick a stitch from there, pick a pattern from there and join it all together, as long as your stitch count's the same. And these are brilliant for when you get on in your crochet and you learn a bit more. So even though these books have, there you've got your wave ones where it's waves. Some of them will call it a chevron, some of them call it waves. This one is ripple, chevron. But to me, it's like v zigzag and ripple, if you know what I mean. So it just, it's different for each place that you live. A lot of the different countries have different sayings for some of the work. But you'll learn that, you'll learn that. Now these books have got hundreds and hundreds of stitch patterns. All these patterns made up with very basic stitches. They've got spike ones, they've got ones in different colours. You don't need to do them in different colours. If you like that, you can just do it in one colour. It's up to you once you learn how to crochet. Tells you how to the difference between bobbles, berries, nubs and bobbles. <laughs> It is so extensive, this one. It tells you the difference from puff stitches. Then you've got that one's clusters and puffs. So there's all these different techniques that you can learn on these. Here you've got fans and shells. I've never understood fans and shells myself. I don't know if it's the amount that's in the cluster that makes it, whether it's a fan or a shell. I don't know. Sometimes I'll call them fans, sometimes I'll call them shells. Some of them are absolutely beautiful. So these books are brilliant. A dictionary of sorts with, so it'll tell you, there's 440 in it. Have a leap through if you can. Read it. Read the comments as well. And then the slight difference between a dictionary one and a technique one. The technique ones and the step-by-step -step ones usually go from the crochet hook, the yarn, basic stitches. It shows you how to sew things together, how to join your squares. With this one, it tells you how to flatten your granny squares as well, which is called blocking. This one, which I think is good to have, it's got a bit of absolutely almost everything. So it'll tell you on this, you've got your basic stitches. It tells you how to grow your rows. It tells you about marking your ends so that you don't add and subtract stitches accidentally. It tells you how to join yarn, different techniques. It tells you how to finish off your edges. All the different ways that you can bring two squares or two parts of crochet together, whether you sew it, whether you crochet it together, or all that kind of thing. It tells you this is called blocking. Now, once you've made your granny square, this tells you how to pin it out when it's damp and leave it to dry and it sets it nice and square. Now, the one thing... 
there's an iron here. <laughs> My mother always told me, never iron. Never iron anything that you've either made with wool or even cotton because it flattens it. It flattens it out. You're better to make it damp and then pin it out with pins on a towel or on a pinning board. There is boards you can buy, but you don't need to buy them. You can put them on a dry bath sheet. Pin it down and then leave it to dry. But there is a little bit here with the iron. It tells you to use it very cool. But I'm, my mother always told me, never iron wool. Never iron wool or your yarn. And I've always remembered that. So there's little tips on the different styles of crochet. The fillet crochet. Then you've got your stripy ones adding different colours. Blocks of colour. And that's what this book does. It starts from very basics. You could read this when you first get it. And then go back in a year's time and read it again. And you'll learn something totally different. You will see something you thought, I, I, I couldn't do that six months ago, but now I can. And now I understand what it means. It takes time as well, like everything else. When you learn to crochet, that's exactly what it is, learning. And you learn all the time. You learn different things all the time. You make mistakes and then you learn from it. That's the way life totally is. And look at this. This is beautiful. It tells you your basic shells, how to build them on top of each other. Very simple, very detailed as well and easy to follow through pictures and through diagrams and the, it's written out as well on this one. That is, This is a good book. I like this book. So the two that even I go back to is like your basic chevron. What's the stitch count on it? And it tells you what the stitch count is and how to change it as well that to keep your pattern running the right way. So you've got zigzags, then you've got it going kind of sort of different into a up zigzag and a, a wave. There is so much to learn. It tells you how to do circles and how to have it nice and neat as well. How to put patterns within the circles. Tells you how to do granny squares. Tells you how to do basic crochet in the round. Well, they've got tubular crochet, but it's basically crocheting around and around where you can make wrist warmers, leg warmers, baskets, bags, all that kind of thing where you can just crochet around and around. And that's what a step-by-step -step book is and look at all this different stuff it's got in it a little section of each and then it's got some little patterns to do using these things I mean a lot of people might think I'm not doing that because I think this is called hairpin and you're actually crocheting around the pin but it makes some beautiful stunning items it really does it is worthwhile having a little try at that Tells you how to make cord, how to make cord so you can make ties for hats, handbag handles, um, lots and lots of things. Anything you need to tie up basically or carry, that's what that does. Tells you how to do sew on trims, how to make those curly ones, how to make little flowers. Tells you how to crochet over the top of crochet as well, how to crochet under, how to crochet over. There is so much in these and it's all kept very basic. Very basic tells you how there's some projects in it as well. A lot of them have a little project, a little baby blanket made out of those squares that showed you earlier. Little easy wraps, easy handbags, easy cushions and extras. There's little complicated extra ones that shows you what you can accomplish if you stick with it. So these are the type of books that I've got lots of books. I've got lots of vintage books as well. I love vintage crochet. I love the really old patterns that were black and silver that had that silver shiny silver. 
<laughs> I don't know even how they printed them with that silver ink on the top of them. I like a lot of those really old crochet patterns. This is a step by step. It tells you different yarns you can get. Different thicknesses of yarn. And this is a more modern day one. A more modern. There's a lot of old ones as well. And it tells you all the old types of yarn that you can't get. But it basically is the same. Oh, my hair there. Tells you all about crochet hooks. This one's even got a conversion chart, tells you what it is in, in Europe and what it is in the US. And it's even got the old UK sizes there as well, because this is a UK one. This is a UK printing. All the basics that a beginner would need. This type of one. It's got basic stitches, again, just like the other one. Most of them are all printed very similar. It'll do the yarn and the hooks and then it'll give you basic stitches, basic little patterns to kick you off that can easily be repeated. A lot of people will say, well, I don't know how to do that. It's only a tiny amount, but you would double it up. It tells you where to start. It tells you what your stitch count is, multiples of four chains, and then add an extra two. A lot of people will say, why do you add extra stitches? Because when you do your first stitch, you use some of the chain that you've made and you don't want to short you don't want to fall short on your stitch count so it might say sets of four and then add an extra two so the extra two makes that very first stitch and then each little pattern section is four stitches that's why it tells you to do it in sets of four and then you'll do as many sets of four as you want and then you'll just repeat the section, then repeat it, and repeat it, and repeat it. And you get a blanket. Now this one has got some filly crochet like the other one. Quite comprehensive. It tells you how to use different colours. It's got some ideas in it as well. This one actually tells you how to follow a crochet pattern. That is this one. This crochet step by step. And it's by Sally Harding. This is a really good one because she tells you how to read a pattern. And I think because patterns are written almost like shorthand, it will say 2TR, that's two trebles. And if you put TR equals treble on a post-it note, and then if you put db means double it tells you what the abbreviation is and if you write it on a post-it note and carry it along with the pattern that helps a lot to learn how to read patterns and i love these again it tells you how to put your granny squares and again it's got an iron oh it's up to you if you iron them but believe me i've tried this and it's even with a really damp cloth and they've came out flat as long as you don't put too much pressure on it, I suppose. But I just stick with what my mother told me. She don't iron it. You can pin it out. You can make it all damp and pin it out. And then put some other towels on the top of it and leave it to dry. As long as you take all the pins back out. So these are quite comprehensive. It's got little projects there to try. It even tells you how to crochet baskets. How to crochet with wire. And there's some ideas how to do some flowers. And that's what you need as a beginner. A basic a little hat. There's a pair of little sort of um, hand warmers, almost like fingerless gloves. A scarf. All the basic little things and how to do some cushions. So if I was to be... So if I was in a shop and there was a beginner who was going to learn to crochet, I would pick a book like this up and a book like one of these up one that's got lots of stitches in and i would say there you go take them home read them follow along with it and then watch my youtube channel <laughs> but these are the two sort of type that i would say to someone now you might say that all stitch dictionaries do a basic how to use a crochet hook not all of them do not all of them do does this one i don't think this one does this one just starts with all the stitches it starts with all the stitches and i love this book i absolutely love this book 
because it's got so many sections. It's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of diagrams and patterns it's written out. I love it. I love it. This is a good book. Now, on Amazon, I think this is quite expensive, but if you don't mind having a second-hand book, then look on eBay. There's also a website called World Books, and a lot of them are second-hand. A lot of them are in very good condition. And I'm sure I got one or two of my Harmony Guides from there, and I got this one on eBay. And so I've bought a lot of books and that from eBay as well. Charity shops are a good source. Car boot sales, flea markets. Um, your friends, if they crochet, ask them if they have a book that you can borrow. The other thing that you can do, <laughs> a little unorthodox, what you can do is if you go onto Amazon, you can order the books. And if you've got Amazon Prime, then you can send the books back for free. If you go through it and it's not to your taste and you don't like it, then you've got 14 days to return it. And you've also, before anyone says, local libraries. You go into your local library. A lot of the libraries these days, you can go online and you can get a lot of books. You can borrow them in PDF format. So you can read it on your phone or your tablet or even your laptop and your computer. If you don't want a physical book, you can buy PDF on Amazon. You can buy them in a PDF version. That means it's an online version. And... Amazon Kindle is free and don't think that you have to have Amazon to be able or a Kindle to use the Kindle app. You don't. I've got the Kindle app on my phone. I've got it on my tablet. I've got, I've, I do have it on my actual Kindle as well, but I've got it on my laptop. I've got it on my computer. You can just download the Kindle app and then you can read PDF file format books. And they're in your phone and you can carry them, hundreds of them around, without having them in your handbag. So I've got lots on my phone as well. But these are the two types of book, not the two books that I'm telling you to go and go out and buy. This type of book, a step-by-step -step guide or a crochet bible type one if you're a beginner. And if you're looking for stitches, then stitch dictionaries or these ones that tell you that there's 300 stitches and patterns in it and this one's got 400 i've got another one that says 500 now if you can have lots of them and but a lot of these patterns will all be repeated whether they're in uk term or american term they do get repeated this is an old book from, these ones I think are from 1990 or something. This one is 80. This one is from the 80s, the very early 80s. Then it was reprinted in the early 90s. And then you've got this one. But a lot of these patterns are the same. They're different publishing companies. They're different names. But a lot of the stitches and patterns are the same. They're not all different. So be wary of that as well. You might get one book and you find that 90% of them are in this one that are in this one. Because crochet is just so old. And all these patterns are really old as well. So that is my little guide. If you want to see more of the books that I have, these are vintage or kind of vintage. Is it 80s vintage now? Maybe it is. <laughs> but I've got lots that are from 1940, 1950, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s and onwards. I've got lots and lots. So if you just want a little delve through the patterns and the books that I have, leave a little comment underneath. I've got folders that I've got patterns. If you just want to sit with a cup of coffee and look through the folders that I have with me, then leave a comment and I can make a quick video with that as well. No one to tell me it'll take you to drink a cup of coffee. But anyway, my little guide to having, if you're a beginner, sort of two or even three of the sort of best ones for a beginner to start with. A step-by-step -step crochet book or a tech an encyclopedia 
technique. Do you know, I've got two of these. I didn't realise actually I had two of these. And this is what happens. It's when you don't, you've got so many you don't even know. <laughs> I've got two. I must have bought one on sale somewhere or someone's gave me one. And I've already got another one. Because what you see is you see a bargain, don't you? You get a bargain. One other thing. One other thing to have is a journal type book. Get yourself a type of journal or a little planner where you can write into it what you've been using. If you're doing a pattern or a blanket, get a little journal thing that you can write down what yarn you've used, what stitch, where you saw it, what book it's in, because if, once you start gathering crochet books, before you know it, you're going to have a lot. And remembering when you've done a when you've done a blanket, trying to remember where you saw which book you saw the stitch in, and writing down your stitch count, yeah, you're, you're better with something like this. And this was printed by my sister, by the way. Look, Elizabeth Russell, that's my sister. Now I'm not showing you inside this one because she's got to do a little bit of tweaking with it. <laughs> she gave it to me to have a look, and I said, "You've spelt some things wrong. You have to fix it." <laughs> But a little book, a little jotter, anything that you've got and write down that you saw it on page 29 on your crochet step-by-step -step book and what yarn you've used and what your stitch count is. That's always a good thing to do when you're a beginner as well, even for me because I forget. I forget, where did, where did I saw that stitch? And you're trailing through this book and you, oh, was that it? No, that wasn't it. And you're trailing through this one and trailing through that one. So always write down where you've saw the stitch and put the date on it as well because it's always a good record if someone says excuse me that's mine and you pinched it you think eh, no 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 I, I saw it in here this is a book I saw in that's a page I saw it in and that's when I've done it and that's why I use these type of books that's exactly why I use these type of books I use all these for reference and for ideas because I know that these are all out there they've all been out there for years and years and years especially these type of ones so anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been a little bit of help to you if you're a beginner or even just having, just listening and looking through the books. Then thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you click on the bell icon, YouTube will tell you for free when I put up another tutorial. So until the next time, happy crochet. And I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.